All right, so again, it's me, Natalie Cousins, and we are going to be bringing on uh, creative director, celebrity photographer, social activist, and uh, creator of the project, The Boo Book, Yvonne Stanley from uh, Elevated Vision. So she's going to jump on here really soon. Um, the importance of today is April is all about um, your business and its success. And so I promise to bring you guys um, stories of entrepreneurs who are on their journey to success. And um, yes, yeah, so I see her here. So we're going to bring her on. Uh, but the, the main goal is that we want to talk about your brand, your business, how she's on her entrepreneurial journey, what got her into photography. So let's bring her on. And have her join us. All right. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and post it in the chat for her as well. Hey, Frank. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. How this is so you? exciting. Yes. Hi, I'm good. Technology. My, face, my right? first Facebook Live. We made it. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So thank you so much for joining me. This has been a long time coming. I know you've been so busy, um, but I definitely wanted to be able to share with the world who you are, what you do, um, and I'm so grateful to have met you. They say that, you know, things happen for reasons. So let's dive right in. So we know that you're the creative director of Elevated uh, Vision. You're a celebrity photographer, a social activist. And you're the creator of the Boo Book, which we're going to get to soon. But I really wanted you to just tell everyone, before we jump into the importance of branding and photography, uh, how you got started in this business. Okay. Um, well, funny enough, I, I took a course in high school a while back <laughs> um, in, in, uh, in film photography and working in the darkroom. I never really considered it as a actual career um and then i guess i always knew i, I was going to be in the arts somehow some way i knew i needed to fit in but i had no clue how because i wasn't really good at anything yet so um i started doing graphic design um i had a love-hate relationship with it because i was a perfectionist and mm. it was very hard to be a perfectionist when you're doing a, a design job for people um, because it takes up a lot of time for minimal pay everybody wants it for free um, and then I went from graphic design to being, believe it or not, a creative director at a magazine. <laughs> and then from that, um, I went into, actually, I was found by um, a man called Michael Chambers. And he, okay. he's also a celebrity photographer. And he's actually the person who did the sex TV yeah. uh, photography. I don't know if you remember sex TV from back yeah. in the day. Yeah. He, that, that's his um, iconic photography. So... He believed in me so much and saw my magazine work and he was just like, I need you. I did actually did a Bob Marley piece where I took typography and I, yeah. I created Bob Marley in different colors. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, he's like, you got to come and work with me. So I said, okay. Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I want you to be my art director on my photo shoot. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is so daunting. I'm going to go to this man's loft and help him put together a photo shoot and yeah. uh, I got to do uh, style makeup and clothes and he even put the camera in my hand and that was mm -hmm. the first time that a camera was put back in my hand and he trusted me and um, from that moment that's when I started my photography career and then I got into food photography which was so much fun but I gained so much weight <laughs> uh, we had like we had lint Nestle Dempsters like yeah. imagine like a, a kitchen with uh, f three chefs making about a hundred meals. Yeah. And then just leaving it on a table for you to eat after. You want to have, yeah. And so then you have to shoot the food and then you have the stylist there and you're just like, literally like you can eat. They're eating. like, oh guys, it's Valentine's day here. Take all these lint chocolates home. I'm like, okay. So sure. how long would you say the journey was from actually touching uh, photography in school to working with Michael? What was the gap? Ooh, how long was I in college for four, five? Six years. I would say six years. Six years. All right. Mm -hmm. So six years, the camera was placed back in your hand and it was like mm -hmm. an emotional attachment. You fell in love with photography again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. fast track to when we met, um, we talked about, I think I was in Atlanta at the time. So we had a, a conversation of, you know, my wedding photos and, and what it was that I wanted. And I, I think one of the things that resonated with me was, you know, I, I gave the emphasis on 
uh, photos speak a thousand words. Mm -hmm. And so the importance for me was to have the day captured. So when I look back at the pictures, I would be able to reminisce on that day. And so, uh, you know, you came, we did the photos, we did the video, but every time I look back at the photos, I just look at the moments that you have captured and you actually were able to connect them so that I could look back and say, okay, this is where I was. This is what I was doing, so on and so forth. And so, when it mm -hmm. came time to build my brand, um, and I was talking to you about photos, and you know, I you talk about control freak and stuff like that. I am so always. It took us a while for for Yvonne to just say, Natalie, it's going to be okay. I got you. And so I had never done a photo even on the shoot. very rainy, windy day <laughs> <laughs> with umbrellas going the other way. You trying to get out of the limo? Yes, yeah. it was. But it, no, you know what the thing was though. I insured you because I'm like, you know what? This is her wedding. She's invested into me, and I'm going to invest back into her because I knew that we couldn't get like the greatest shots at that moment in time outside. That's why we like replanned to do another yeah engagement yeah. shoot and everything, so that you wouldn't lo lose lose out because that yeah yeah. So let's very talk pretty. about brand <laughs> photography. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that uh, brand photography is very important. Um, it's not just going over to the super center and taking some headshots and coming out. Um, and, and I oh God. Say... <laughs> you can do that. Oh, it's horrible. I'm so sorry for all of you that did that. So when we talk about that, we got to really think about um, what's actually happening, what we're actually trying to do and what the image is. So let's talk about how you take your clients through um uh, setting up a brand photography photo shoot, so on and so forth. Let's dive right into that. Sure. Okay. So because I have a marketing background, I always, um, I always thought that it was important to incorporate the two. So um, first I start off with a creative brief um, and the creative brief basically goes over like, what is your goal with this photography? Like, is it personal photography or is it business photography? If it's business photography, what is your goal? What are you trying to tell your, your viewers? What are you trying to tell your market? What are you trying to do? So if it's sales that you're looking for, okay, then let's, let's go in that direction and focus uh, on things that will make this photo sell your product or sell you as a, as a brand or whatever it might be. So we also go over color theory. Um, and, and I also help people to um, almost like rebrand a little bit to see if like their brand is working for them. Uh -huh. So we go over color theory and like the different colors, let's say to match their skin tone um, it, uh, around their brand theme. So like, let's say if it was Pepsi, clearly there's, there's two colors that are very popular, which is red and blue. Right. Um, so with your brand, what are your colors and are they, are they working for you? Right. Because colors are so important. You have no idea. <laughs> they they really, are. Yeah. They really make an impact on people. And, and you when each color that you select, it's like, you're not just, like when you see colors out there with logos, those are not just selected like, oh, we like that color. Mm -hmm. That is, is for your well, brain no. training. It's like that color is going to make that person crave sugar or that person, that, that color is going to make somebody feel calm and relaxed or feel secure. Um, so it's really, really important to know color theory. And the good thing is that I already know it. So you don't really have to know it. You just come to me, you tell me what you want. And I, I make sure that you're going in the right direction. Um, but I'm always willing to talk to my clients about it because I want everybody to be educated on it. Um, another thing is props and stuff like what, how are we creating this scene? So I offer prop pulling services where, where we can create your environment. Um, you know, a good example is Carlin with her um, mm -hmm. success planner. And we, the first photo shoot that we did for, with her, it was vital for us to create a comfortable, classy environment that any woman would love to lounge in and to read her book be to, to go over her stuff yeah to be comfortable and and inviting because uh her brand is about um empowering women and giving them a safe space um to discuss issues so we wanted that and we wanted to keep it very clean this is all white uh all white with gold yeah. um so it also symbolized like royalty um and, and the white was comfort, cleanliness, you know. So each photo kind of evokes some emotions and, and you can kind of decide, like play around with it to see what your thing is. But the creative brief, I would say, is the most important step before when, when I have a client that I'm working with um, to see where they want to go. So again, target market, who's your market? What's your color theory? Um, what props do you want to use to create the environment? Um, and, and a couple other things that we sit down and go over. 
Okay. And so we did exactly that with my, my uh, branding. I can, I, I can talk about the befores and afters of my first photo shoot. I could talk about working with an inexperienced photographer as well. But I could tell mm -hmm. you that when I redid my branding uh, in December and had you do that photo shoot and the marketing and everything that came into play, uh, I think that that's been my most successful shoot. So thank you so much for that as well. Oh, pleasure. So we know that you're I'm glad you love them. I love to see people that are happy with their, with their shots and I love yeah. to see them all over social media. Yeah. It's funny because I actually scroll through and most of the time I'm seeing my photos and I'm just like, wow, still I did that photo shoot like two years ago. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, nice. it's heartwarming, right? When you yeah, it makes me feel very good. Yeah. And yeah, so it, sure. it, it becomes, um, you're, you're international now. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, you're working on a project called The Boo Book. So let's talk about uh, your entrepreneurial journey and how you started that. What's it all about? Um, yeah, funny enough, you know, when you when you go from photography to boobs, um, you, it's hard to be taken. Like, it's hard for you personally to understand that you're making that leap mm -hmm. and that people may look at you differently. People, the fact that I'm a boob photographer now yeah. is uh, can be daunting for some of my business people, but I've decided that you have to follow like divine timing and, and just um, understand that things happen the way that they should. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm helping people trumps all Everything. business people that won't do business with me because I shoot boobs. Mm -hmm. And now nothing has happened yet in terms of getting less customers or less clients or anything like that. But I knew that that was a risk getting into becoming a boob photographer. Um, the reason why I did that was because um, well, I guess the transition was, was natural. It was, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a business photographer. I love what I do, but I want to, I want to be creative again. I want to get expose my film and, and I, and I also want to, to do, I want to photograph something from the heart. Uh -huh. And for some reason, I always had a connection with boobs growing up. Like they were just always around. You know, I just had a good upbringing in terms of not feeling as though breasts were taboo. And I decided that maybe that can be my art form is I can shoot breasts into the female body anonymously. And then I could ask them for their story and, and document it. And I thought, okay, well, let me put it into a book. And I sat with my friends over, um, my, my girlfriend who was in a magazine, um, and it was a female magazine, basically asked um uh sorry she was there and and it inspired me the magazine the feminist magazine inspired me to create um a piece for their for their book which is the first time i thought about making a doing a boob shot right so um after that i did it and then i was just like let me keep going now she didn't accept the image because she's like no it's too much for our magazine but it basically made me think and the second that i started thinking about it a million ideas came to me and then I said, you know what? This is healing for women. This mm -hmm. is healing for me. This is a great way for me to express myself creative, creatively. Great. This is a great way for me to create a book. Like who, who would ever thought that I would have made a book yeah. and now have exhibitions. So now I wasn't just um, a business uh, photographer, but I was an artist. Yeah, and it's I was, art and, I, and I think that I was always an artist, but I didn't have that outlet to be like, oh, this is my artwork. This is my exhibition. And now I have an exhibition that we're going to tour around the world with. Exactly. So it's very, very exciting. Um, yeah, but it, it, it blew up when I actually had a personal experience happen to me and I realized how important this, it is. this project could be. Wonderful. Yeah. And so uh, you can also uh, captivate. There's a lot of women who uh, have the breast cancer and so on and so forth. So it's mm. like catch, capturing them in that image as well. And so I think that your movement is great. Everyone's movement's going to be personal to them. And it's mm -hmm. the heart that soars it and allows it to elevate and get high so hence the name of your company elevated vision so it all mm -hmm. works out right mm -hmm. um so entrepreneurship we know that you're juggling the two businesses now um we want to talk about uh how you juggle the two empires and anything that you want to say or any advice or any questions that you have that that you you want to be able to get out there yeah ask for help <laughs> um juggling two businesses, which is really 10, <laughs> because there's a lot more going on behind the scenes and I have a lot of projects. Um, I, I have to ask for help. I, I burnt out. I almost completely shut down while I was going through this, um, going through the launch 
of uh, this one's for me, which was under the boot book. I felt as though I didn't know what to do. I was lost. I was burnt out. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I, it, it was tricky because when you're doing everything yourself, um, self-inflicted, um, you're really not living up to the potential of your company or um, your, your non-for-profit or whatever you're doing. Yes. When you ask for help and you're not shamed of, of reaching your hand out, um, amazing things happen. I had a, a marketer come on board. I had a PR person come on board. I had a lawyer come on board. I had my best friend come and support me. And I didn't feel as though I was alone in it because, which was again, self-inflicted. I, I let myself work alone because I'm like, well, technically I'm a graphic designer. Technically I'm a web designer. Technically I'm a photographer and a marketer and all these things. So I'm like, well, I don't need to hire anybody, but I really did. I needed a team. And, and that's what got me through in terms of elevated vision. Um, that is basic, basically a sole project. I do um, hire on people from time to time, but in terms of contract work, but that project has, has been me solely. And, and I'm looking to expand because I realize that you can't, you can't win just by with yourself. You need a team to take you to levels, especially because I guess my advice is that when you're looking at something for too long, you can't see the potential of it anymore. You need somebody else to step back and see the amazing potential in your project to take it to new heights, because that's what I do for other people. I can go in, I swear I should have like switched careers and been in like, I don't know, a business consulting maybe <laughs> because um, I can take a step back and look at a company and be like, this needs to change. That needs to change. This needs to change. That can do go better. The potential is here for this. Like I can just see magic in somebody's brand. Yes. But for my own, it's very hard to step back and, but the most important thing is knowing that you need to step back, but it's very hard to step back and look at your brand and be like, what do I need to change now? Because you're so in it. You can't help yes. it. Well, it's like so, a designer, right? They, they they can do people's spaces. I was an interior designer for years. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, my space didn't reflect the spaces that I did for clients. I would consistently be shopping, buying pieces. And then my husband would be like, okay, don't buy anything else until you figure out what you want with these pieces. It's the same thing. And we talked about this. Uh, over the the 15 years of me being a business consultant, one of the top things that I recommend is uh, delegation. That's mm -hmm. going to be the biggest thing that's going to get your yep. business operating smoothly. So you've been in business, you know what things light your flame and what things irk you. So if you know yep. what those are, delegate the things that you don't want to do. And you'll, it, yeah. you'll, you'll that's see that it huge. runs huge, huge. Yeah, it's huge. Um, yeah, even like while I was launching the boot book and running Elevated Vision, I had an Oscar style photo shoot that I set up at the Black Diamond Ball. And if I did not delegate and hire on people, I don't know what I would have done. Right. At all. Because you can only do so much. And if you really want to be successful, you need to understand that you can't hold on to that money and hold mm -hmm. on to like um, working um, just by yourself and, and you get all the spoils and all the wins. And I, I never looked at it like that. It was more so I couldn't afford to hire somebody. Uh -huh. um, but now I'm just like, no, you, you, you can say that your whole life. You can say, oh, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. Mm. I can't afford to hire somebody on full time. Well, you know what? For one, there's grants and programs out there yes. that can allow you to do that. Um, two, you're not like you need to, what is that saying? You have to spend in order to make. Yeah. Yeah. There's something in your business. Yes. Yeah, like spend it, money it, to make money. Yeah, you have to spend money to make money. And that is so true. And last week or last month, I spent a lot of money. <laughs> I spent a lot of money. It'll come back. But yeah, it'll come back. And, and I'm and I'm grateful and I, I'm relieved and I'm happier. So well, this is good. I just like the fact that uh, you are following your passion. You guys, this goes to show you that the entrepreneurial journey, uh, once you are content with where it is that you want to go and once things start to align in your focus and you have the drive everything else comes into play uh we know that she is a toronto native right mm -hmm. she's been she had had a six-year gap uh between taking photography uh in high school and then uh working with a celebrity uh photographer six years later uh she, you're the creative director you are a celebrity uh i like that i like that the person that uh, did my brand photos and my wedding uh, photography is a celebrity uh, photographer. Oh, girl. You know what, though? Celebrities are one thing, 
Yeah. But I am going way above celebrities. I, yes. Because I don't get, like, a lot of, um, like, it's great to shoot celebrities. It's fun and everything like that. But it doesn't um, feed my soul. No. And that's, that like, my soul your boo book. Yeah, the boot book is going to be way better than any yeah. celebrity photography I've done. Believe I me. I love Believe that. me. <laughs> I love that. And so when you're in your in your passion, you know what it is that you want to do, everything else takes flight from there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I will tell every tell everyone how they, I'm not going to tell them, you're going to tell them how they can be in touch with you for both projects. Yeah. Um, I mean, definitely if you want photography services from personal, like I shoot robots, <laughs> from robots to people, to celebrities, to food, um, businesses, business branding is my specialty and my love. Um, yeah, definitely reach out to me at info at evdesign.ca or just go on my website, evdesign.ca, or you can reach me on Instagram at at we want ev, we dot want dot ev. And then for the boot book, if you're interested in being in my book, we are taking submissions now. Um, you can also submit a selfie uh, with clothes with the hashtag this one's for me on it over your chest and submit it via Instagram. Or you can also um, submit us a naked selfie anonymously can. to our email, to my email. And that is info at theboobbook.com and www.theboobbook.com for more information and images. We're planning to go on an international tour with it and um and have this book so um basically we're, we're just really excited to see who's gonna come on board um we have some great things planned right now and uh we're excited to see where where it's gonna go i can't give away too many secrets right now we're actually uh, i i just saw somebody log on right now renuka um wow my mentor wow. i just told i i i told her undercover that she was my mentor because you know sometimes you don't want to admit it sometimes you just watch People. and see the glory and you're just like wow okay i see what you're doing i'm taking note you're you're somebody that's on my radar yes and and i admitted it to her over the phone one day because i was just like wow you are like one of the most amazing power couples yes. you're one of the most amazing individuals i've met over time um she does business with my father and and i've just seen the way she carries herself and everything and i was just like i want to i want to continue to watch what you're doing and uh, she invited me to an event uh, that I'm going to for the boot book. So uh, if anybody wants to come and support, it's a fundraiser for mental health. Yes. It's tomorrow. Uh, it's today. Sorry. Oh, it's, it's today. <laughs> Color ball. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, look it up and I'll, I'll add the information below. Yes, please do. But, but yeah, we're doing big things with the boot book and we're excited. Wonderful. So you guys, again, this is Yvonne Stanley. She is the creative director, celebrity photographer, social activist, and the creator of the Boo Book. I've posted her to uh, website information in the chat. Yvonne, I thank you so much for carving out some time out of your day to be able to speak with me. It's always an absolute pleasure. Always great conversation. I call thank our you. conversations sips and conversations because it's just always so uh, full of uh, life, full of energy, and full of passion. Thank you. All right. So guys, thanks so much for joining. I'm Natalie Cousins, your business consultant for life, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Yvonne. Bye. Thank you.